Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Dan here. And uh today's video has um well this replay in particular is the greatest example of luck I could possibly ever show you. Uh if what happens in this game is absolutely insane. Uh so this is on the new map Stalingrad. And this is the third time I have ever played it. Uh, and this will become quite apparent because I'm trying to go over to the furthest road over. On the edge of the beach. And I end up one road too far in. Because I still don't know how to play this map at all. And... This replay, yet again, is the greatest example of luck I can show you. So, I am in the SC-100 like usual. And this is still one of my favorite tanks ever. But I have a newcomer, which will be in the next replay. That is actually pretty good, and I'll, I'll talk more about it at that time. So, I noticed that there's a few tanks up here. One of which, in particular, is a nice one-shot kill for me, because this gun is so unbelievably fun. Now, I'm trying to get at him, but I'm also paying attention to our Churchill, who's going after the T1 Heavy on the left. And it looks like I guess it's going alright. I mean, um, he's doing a lot of damage to the T1 Heavy, and isn't taking too much in the way of damage. But he exposes his flank and gets himself killed killed. So I'm trying to come in and finish him off. And I take a hit from a light tank. I take another hit from the same light tank. And I have made this quite apparent that I do not like light tanks charging after me. And he makes a very intelligent move and decides not to come around. Now what happens next is another example of luck. Not even fully aimed in, that shot manages to shoot the Chaffee and finish him off. Uh, sorry if I sound a little weird, I actually have a cold right now, so it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, so I'm already at about three-fifths of my health. Not even fully aimed in, I get a shot off and tear down his health. Now, he is more interested in the SU-100Y, and, um... I guess that really wouldn't have changed anything because he was a one-shot kill for me anyway, whether he shot at me or not. So this T-14 over here, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can maybe get a little shot off on him uh, or something. I end up not being able to do it because the aiming time on this thing is too slow, and I take a hit right from a Stug. Okay, another shot. I aim in. His shot hits me, but it doesn't go through. He hits me on the gun mantle, like the smallest part on the front of the tank. Anywhere else, that shot would have killed me. So, four kills, we're only winning by one. I go in and finish off the SU-100Y. Now, their T-14 is more interested in me. My shot bounces off the side of him, his shot bounces off of me. I try going in for the rear because it's the weakest armor. And I finish him off. I am at six kills now. But the problem is, is we've only got one heavy left, and he just died. So it's two mediums, and one tank destroyer, and then two artillery. The two artillery, they can't really do a whole lot without us, so they're kind of... I wouldn't say they're useless, but they're not capable of helping unless we're there. So, in all reality, it's technically just two mediums and a tank destroyer versus two heavies, a tank destroyer, and an artillery. And we're going to find out soon enough that one of their heavies is still on full health. And there's their Churchill. But this is no problem for the 122mm gun on the SU-100. Because it just loves big slow moving targets. So there goes roughly half of his health and I just let the mediums go and finish him off because he's a relatively easy kill. 
their KV-85 doesn't go after me. And that is a mistake, because now he is dead. Now we're significantly winning at this point. Um, I mean, they've only got a tank destroyer and an artillery left. And their artillery can't do any spotting unless their tank destroyer is nearby. Now, I'm still shaking at this point, because I have no idea what's going on. And there's their artillery. Their artillery misses me by just a few meters. I am still alive. No idea why. At all. And I'm at 8 kills. And... This is actually really scary for me right now, because... I am still potentially a one-shot kill for just about any tank at this point. And I have no idea where their tank destroyer is at. So, I'm debating on whether I should go hunting for him, and I decide against it. So I'm just going to sit here, waiting for, maybe he might come up this road. And sure enough, he does. But I'm not going to let him get a shot off on me. So I see him turning, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I could get a shot. Nope, he's facing at me again. Now, the artillery hits, but I don't see the arc, and I thought he fired. So I'm going in for the kill. And his shot hits the mound. Not me, the mound. And I finish him off. Nine kills. Nine kills in the SU-100, and I should have been dead after, like, the second. This game... I can't even explain how lucky I was to still be alive at the end, because you saw right there how many times I could have died. This tank is not meant to play like a heavy, but when your team doesn't do anything and then pretty much completely dies off, you have to play it like a heavy tank. And in the right circumstances, it plays like a very aggressive heavy tank. But only in the right circumstances. So there we go, nine kills. Now I'm going to get the next replay loaded up, and it is the next uh, best game I got at the, um, at the time. Alright, so here we are on Fisherman's Bay, and I am in my newest uh, addition to the garage, the SU-100M1. Now, what you might have heard from quite a few people, especially on World of Tanks, uh, using the Russian tank destroyer line, is that this is a pretty awful tank. And in fact, a lot of people will say most of the newer Russian tank destroyers on this particular line are awful. Um, and I will agree, there are some major downsides to this tank. Uh, for instance, the limited gun depression and uh, firing arc. But this thing makes up for it in sheer amount of shells it can fire in a small period of time. And its mobility. Like, you just saw how fast it can move and how fast it can accelerate uphill. And it's a really good tank. It's also extremely accurate. And as you can see, the front armor is that it's extremely bouncy, even though it's about 90 millimeters or so. So you will actually get quite a few bounces if you're playing in a game where you're maybe the only tier 7. Um, it is a really nice tank destroyer. It doesn't have the sheer um, alpha damage of the SU-152, nor does most of the tank destroyers in this line. Most of them don't do a whole lot of damage, but they can fire fast, and they're extremely accurate. So here we are. KV-85, I don't hit him, so not a good example of the accuracy, but that second shot did hit him. As you can see, he's lower on health now. So I'm moving up again. T-29, I am never a fan of firing at these things, but the KV-85 lets me fire right into his turret. And I'm sitting here thinking whether I should even risk a shot on the T-29. I decide against it. Looking at my tank again, just thinking about how awesome it looks. And still sitting here, see a tree fall down, not really risking the shot. There's another target. Plant one right in the front of him. Finish him off, first kill. Going for the Shafi. Second kill. KV-85, third kill. 
another KV-85. Fourth kill. Uh, T-29. Front armor is pretty weak. I am debating whether I want to take the shot. I do it anyway. It doesn't do anything. This was, by the way, the first game where I wasn't on a team with a bunch of incompetent players. Uh, due to the uh, five times experience weekend event thing, uh, it usually draws out a lot of awful players. And you get stuck in a lot of games with awful players on your team, and you're the only one doing anything. At all. And this tank can handle um, firing a lot, as you can see. It's got about a five-second reload, and this thing isn't even fully upgraded yet. One thing it cannot do is take on a lot of tanks. Uh... It's got good maneuverability, so you can do a lot of uh, poking out and shooting at things, but it doesn't like taking a lot of shots from heavier tanks. You can bounce them. I was in one game where I bounced just about every single shot from a tier 8 tank. So, there's another artillery down. I am at 5 kills in a tank where I literally just got this gun that morning. And here's... One tank that usually proves to be a bit of a problem for me. His shot misses me. Artillery sets him on fire, but I'm going to take the kill anyway, because I was already ready to do it myself. I bounced a shot, no idea what was firing at me. I think it was the light. Uh, risky thing coming up over the ridge, because there was likely going to be a tank there. I don't feel like sitting around, so I used my repair kit. It was the Nashorn that did that, and also took a massive thing of my health away. Problem is, is he could fire me all he wants, but he is dead. Uh, he is my main target, though. I am going to go for him no matter what. So I decided to charge across the battlefield because the SU-100 and the light tank are unlikely going to be able to do a whole lot, especially the light tank. I let him take his shot before crossing in front of him because I don't like getting shot at finish off the Nashorn, and the SD-100 was never a problem to begin with because he was on the complete other side of the map. So there we go. One of the first good games I had in the SD-100 M1. I didn't do a whole lot of damage, I didn't get a uh, high caliber, because for the most part I just took a lot of really uh, cheap kills. But still, 7 kills was a lot for this tank, considering for the most part. Before that, I only got about four, and I would die soon after. So, if you liked the SU-100, but didn't particularly like the 122mm cannon, and preferred more just the 100mm gun, and it's fast firing, but maybe not so much damage, uh, then you might like this tank a lot, because it feels very much like it. It's very uh, bouncy from the front when you're taking on lower tier tanks with less uh, like lower caliber guns and whatnot, uh, it is really fun to drive. Granted, you know, you kind of need good people on your team or else you're not going to be able to do a whole lot by yourself. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's a good tank. Uh, I might I might do some more videos on it later on. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this uh, replay video, and if you have any of your own replays you want to send in, please let me know. I would love to have other things to show. Uh, if there's anything you want to talk to me about for World of Tanks or whatever, I am willing to take any uh, ideas or suggestions or whatever. Uh, other than that, just like and comment, anything you want to do, subscribe if you like this stuff and you want to see more. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Take care.